Hey, how's it going, everybody? Does anyone of you live in Russia or has ever been to Russia, maybe on vacation? Well, this is Visit Russia, the don'ts of visiting Russia. In case you haven't seen uh, my other video that I did about the don'ts of visiting Germany, the country where I'm from, definitely go check it out. It's by the same dude here, Walter's World. And uh, this one is especially interesting to me because I'm currently learning Russian. I just started about literally just three days ago or so. And uh, yeah, so if there's any other, if there's any people out there that can actually teach me Russian, I would really, really appreciate it for you to comment on this video. Let's check it out. Hello travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're at the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, Russia. And today what we have for you are some of the don'ts about visiting Russia. And before I get into my list of the don'ts, one thing I really have to say is don't prejudge Russia. Whatever you hear in the news and all these kind of stuff, there's so many things out there saying bad stuff about Russia and stuff like that. It is a wonderful place to visit, so don't be influenced by that stuff. Come explore for yourself. And I want to start off with that, okay? Now, my real don't list is going to start with number one. Don't even think about trying to come to visit Russia without getting a visa. You're going to need one unless you're one of the few mm. countries that don't have to have one. And as I look at the numbers of our views, most of you come from places that need a visa and it does take a long time, okay? So make sure you're planning beforehand. Okay. Yes, there is a visa-free cruise you can do to stop in St. Petersburg for less than 72 hours, but if you want to go and explore this beautiful country, whether it's Moscow or going on a, the Volga River and stuff like that, you do have to get a visa, so okay. don't skip that. You Makes gotta sense. plan for it ahead yeah. of time. And with that, don't forget Forget to register your visa when you do get to Russia. If you're staying at a hotel, they'll do it for you. But if you're staying with friends and stuff like that, you do have to register it. And don't forget to make copies of all your important documents, like where you're going to stay, your plane tickets, passport, visa. Wait, you're going to have to... So you get a visa, you go there, and then you have to register as well? All that kind of stuff, you want to have that. Second don't I have for you is do not lose, don't lose your registration card. When you come into Russia, they're going to give you like an immigration card they'll fill out. You need that when you leave. If you don't have that, it can cause some trouble. So make sure you don't forget it. Don't think, oh, it's just a piece of paper, whatever. Don't. It's like, guys, I'm just trying to leave, okay? Forget it, okay? My next don't for you is don't forget your rubles, okay? Ruble is the currency here in Russia, and that's what you're going to pay with. But you can pay with card, no problem in places like St. Petersburg and Moscow. But if you're gonna be traveling Russia, cash is more king here, mm -hmm. and you're gonna need rubles to pay. Sometimes St. Petersburg's and stuff, you can pay with euros or dollars here and there. What? But in general, it's rubles, and you need to have them to pay because not a lot of places will take credit cards. So just a heads up for that one. And with that- Russia, I thought that Russia would probably be the last place where I would ever be able to buy to play, to buy something with dollars. Even here in Germany, you can only pay with, with euros. I mean, I have, don't get me wrong, I've never tried actually paying with a different currency but i'm sure it doesn't work i mean most most people you know the, the the currency exchange and how what the current rate is i mean most people have no idea so i'd be very surprised that don't in i mean don't forget you don't forget your rubles that's like saying don't forget money when you go out of course expect this to be a cheap trip russia is expensive whether it's the visas the hotels restaurants stuff like that you will spend a lot as a foreigner here and kind of going along with that is don't get upset if you see two different prices and you as the traveler have to pay a higher price because some museums and places actually have two set prices one for locals and one for foreigners what? so don't get upset by it but just realize that sometimes you are going to pay more and don't That's try to weasel up. your way out of it because they know if you're a local or not my sixth don't for you is don't mess with the cops or any kind of the government officials when you are here. When you go through, make sure you have your information, all your stuff for the border control. And don't stare at the cops. Don't take pictures of the cops. Don't ask them things because they have to help you. And sometimes I've been shut down by cops here before. You don't want to give them a reason to ask for your documents and stuff like that, okay? So just don't mess with the police when you are here. Well, but here's the thing. They ask that sort of thing almost anywhere. So, I mean, you never want to mess with the police. That's just... It's very general advice. Now, my next door for you for here in Russia is don't let down your guard. Look, Moscow and St. Petersburg are probably the two places you're really going to visit a lot. And there are pickpockets here. There's people trying to rip you off, all kinds of stuff. You do want to pay attention. So don't, like, don't leave your stuff on the back of your seat if you're at a cafe. You know, do put the stuff between your legs. Always be paying attention because you don't know if you're on the metro. Someone might be trying to pick your pocket and things like that. You do want to watch out for that. Now, the next don't I have for you has to deal with the churches here. The Russian Orthodox churches are gorgeous from the outside and amazing from the inside. And my don't with that is don't 
let's skip the churches, okay? A lot of people think, oh, I'll just, it's churches, whatever. Man, coming to the Russian Orthodox churches with the icons and the gold and the silver and everything, it just Jesus. blows your mind, whether you're going to St. Basil's or the, or the Spilled Blood Church here. I mean, there's so many amazing churches throughout the country. Don't skip those, but also, don't wear a hat when you're there. But if you are a woman, do cover your head because it's an Orthodox country, they're conservative, and so you want to show respect for that. Now my next don't for you when you are here is if you're gonna bring money, like I talked about, you need to get rubles, is don't bring banged up US dollars or euros. You need to have the crisp, clean kind so you'll exchange them, otherwise they won't accept them. My 10th thing for you is don't assume the Russians are cold-hearted kind of people. Yes, the service is kind of bad when you are here, but if you get to know Russians, they really oh, aren't, aren't these warm up to you. I mean, I can't tell you how many times Babushkas have taken Russians. Aren't these they those, those dolls that you can actually, like where there's multiple dolls in one? Like three or four and one, yeah. I was I always found them quite uh, quite cool. They really warm up to you. I mean, I can't tell you how many times babushkas have taken me in and made me their cabbage rolls, and people have shown me around. Just by speaking a little bit of Russian can go a long way. Okay, so don't be scared of that language as well. Learn a few words. It really opens up the people. And then I guess something with the people, they have a lot of these little tiny things like don't shake hands over the threshold, don't give flowers in even numbers, just so you know, make things a little bit better. Another don't I have for you is don't sp speak bad about Russia, the politicians, the country, the culture, the food, things like that. It will not. <laughs> well, I can actually read this. I can actually read what it says here. This is isn't isn't it Sankt Petersburg? Sankt Petersburg. Yeah, I know the I know I know the letters a little bit already. The strongest, the most powerful since 1999. Oh boy over well and they'll let you know that and they'll tell you look deal with your country we'll deal with ours so just don't get involved with those kind of things and one of the things my russian friends always made sure they do and now i realize it is you don't leave empty bottles on top of the table you've been drinking you put it on the floor i never really realized it till i started noticing it again and read it a few places but it is really true anyway those are just 10 or 11 quick little don'ts of visiting russia if you want to learn more 10 things that'll shock you about russia things you should know before you come here check us on our website at waltersworld.com we're also on twitter All right let's see let's see one of the comments have to say after this one I'm, I'm very very curious now all right another don't let's let's check these out a little bit another don't don't repeat the words you hear in russian car crash videos <laughs> oh boy um do not try to rebuild the soviet union from the ground up no to marry leave the politics behind before you travel to russia oh, that's a good point you know it's a good point as a russian i'm surprised how on point all these tips are all the don'ts are absolutely true. I'm a tour guide in some F until they... Uh, I mean, it was a very basic thing. I was planning to Russia, messing with the Russian police. Oh, well, I'm off to... Oh, well, I'm off to my sailing trip around Somalia. Oh, Jesus Christ. When it comes to the cost of food, the thing is that restaurants are extremely expensive, but groceries are extremely cheap. That's what I thought, that the groceries must be super cheap. For a month, if you rent a flat with a kitchen, which costs less than a hotel, and cook for yourself... What else would people say? Don't forget to offer your seat in public trans uh, elderly people, pregnant women and women with little kids. It's considered very rude and impolite. If you don't, especially if you're a man. Well, it's almost anywhere, but then again, I guess it's 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 the same in a lot of world in a lot of, in a lot of ways. But uh, you know, don't forget to take off your shoes coming to Russia house by default. If you've been said so. Okay, if you're going for a date with a local, don't bring even number of flowers, only odd. We're being even flowers only in case of funeral. Oh, jeez. <laughs> okay, well, this video was very short, so we're going to do another one um, by the same guy, Walter's World. Uh, actually, how old is this one? 2017. There's another one he did, which is 10 Shocks of Russia. Let's check this one out as well. Hey there fellow travelers, Mark here with Walter's World and today we're in St. Petersburg, Russia for the 10 things that are going to shock travelers when they come here to Russia. So let's get started. And the first thing that shocks people when they come here are the people. And some oh, of it is the service when you're here or lack of service. Yes, don't expect a lot of service when you come to Russia. It can be shockingly bad and time consuming and just uh, frustrating. <laughs> and yes, sometimes it seems like they don't care. Oh my god, is that... And they don't smile and just... Uh, is that Rasputin? 
Oh, Jesus. Frustrating. <laughs> and yes, sometimes it seems like they don't care and they don't smile back and that kind of shocks some people. But look, they're not mean. They're just reserved. And the thing is, when you get to know Russians and they open up to you, they can be some of the most fun people ever. I mean, so I've had so many great Russian. parties and great dinners and great times with my Russian friends I've made around the world. I mean, have you ever had a party and then when you go to sleep, someone tries to sew you into your bed? Yeah. That's the fun stuff that Russians do. And when I've had the chance to meet the people, you know, and when it's really helped is just knowing a few words of Russian can turn that stone face into a, hey, you could be a friend of mine kind of thing. And it really makes a difference. So do try to learn a little bit so you can meet the people. Because I can't tell you how many cabbage rolls I have eaten over the years from babushkas, grandmas, that are, you know, the grandmas of my friends are like, oh, Mark, he's home alone. He needs friends. And they'll be like, bring him over. You know, I've had times where it's, hey, Mark, my friend Max, is his, his mom's like, uh, well, Max would like, uh, my mom, my grandma said you have to come over because you need to eat because <laughs> they were worried about me. I mean, the people really are super hospitable when you get to know them. That's why you should take the time. If you're going to go on the Trans-Siberian Highway, bring a deck of cards and something to drink. Seems to be a very popular stance or lying position where people have this chicken right here and this dude right here that giveaway that you're Russian. So you can share and play cards and gamble and stuff like that because you will get to know the people and it is quite fun to meet them and hang out with them. And that's why I really want to say is it shocks people that yes, that service can be so bad, but this people can really be wonderful when you get a chance to actually meet them. So if you get a chance to, do meet them, all right? Now, the second thing that shocks people when they come here is actually deciphering the language. <laughs> Look. Russian is the Cyrillic alphabet. You will not understand anything, and it shocks people when they come here and think, "Oh well, the Cyrillic." Wait, isn't isn't that wouldn't that be Twalyet? 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 Or is it is isn't the Y a U? Toilet. I guess this means toilet. Yeah, Twalyet. Twalyet alphabet you will not understand anything and it shocks people when they come here and think oh well I'm sure they know some English or something like that no look Russia is one of the largest countries in the world in population size and things like that and so they focus on Russian just like in the US it's all in English here it's all in Russian and finding people that speak English is sometimes hard to find outside of you know some of the major cities and even in places like St. Petersburg and Moscow you don't always get a lot of English around there even in the tourism industry so make sure you do know a little bit and remember what I told you knowing a little bit of signage is getting better for non-russian speaker tourists russian can really warm people up so a spasiba you know thank you and uh you know <laughs> you know a, a pivo you know for for a beer or hey let's get a, a pivo you know let's get a drink oh hey you know some stuff it really opens people up and yes does yes and they is no and things like that but it is one of those things and I, i'd also say yeah where that's one of the things you should know but it is really cool and the thing is though it is really hard to decipher the letters so before you come make sure you at least try to get an idea of what the letters sound like like some letters are really easily some some letters are really easy some are kind of strange like there's this hard sign there's a soft sign or something like that it's got th the russian alphabet has about i think 33 letters in total so it's more than what, what i'm used to in a german the backwards R is a Y, yeah, and then the there's a D that looks weird, and you got the, the you think it's a P, but it actually makes an R sound. It can get kind of confusing, and when you're taking the metro and you're looking for places and you can't figure it out, it can get really shocking and scary for people. So I do recommend get a Google Translate app and download the offline version, so you can just take a picture of things and it'll dis and, and translate it for you. It will make your life a lot easier. But you'll be shocked how you have really no clue when it comes to the Russian language. Now the third thing that's going to shock you are the churches, specifically the Russian Jesus. Orthodox churches on the outside, you know, with the onion domes and all the colorings. But for me, it's the insides of the churches. So you know, I wouldn't actually categorize this as a as a shock because we've actually seen this one before, even in the domes. Kind of strange how he puts the the the. Uh, the churches in there. Go to St. Basil or, or the Spilt Blood Church here in St. Petersburg. They're just gorgeous with the icons inside, the gold, the silver, and all these things. It is truly amazing. And you go in, and you're like, wow. I mean, you don't, you go into so many churches where you just go, wow. And you get shot by that beauty. So don't skip the, the, the churches when you come here. Go and enjoy them because they really are shockingly beautiful. Now, the fourth thing that shocks people when they come to Russia is they realize that, wait, there's more than St. Petersburg and Moscow. Yes, you can go to the Kremlin in Moscow, but you know what? You can go to the Kremlin in Kazan. 
Kremlin means citadel. That's where the church and the walls and all these things are. Oh. And you can really see it in lots of different places. And Russia has a lot of great places to check out. You have St. Petersburg with the Hermitage and the Winter Palace and, and the river here and all these kind of things are super awesome to do. And in Moscow with the Kremlin, Red Square and seeing Lenin, yeah, it's great. But getting out and exploring Russia is really a fantastic thing. So, you know, for me, I know when I was doing my research, I'm like, man, Kazan with the mosque there and the, and the, and the Kremlin there just looks gorgeous and I really want to check it out. Going on a Volga River cruise something like that you have all these things that are really amazing so don't be shocked when you realize that hey, wait it's not just st. Petersburg and Moscow no this place is huge and that leads to the next shock is how insanely huge Russia is I was about to say that actually you know obviously there's much more than just st. Petersburg and Moscow because just look at the size of Russia is look get it Russia goes from one side of Asia to the other side of Asia and then into Europe. Okay, it's huge. And that Trans-Siberian Highway is going, or sorry, that Trans-Siberian Railroad will take you days, weeks, maybe a month to go through it all. So you really need to realize the size of this place is enormous. And especially if you're going to even the cities like Moscow and St. Petersburg, when you look at a map for a Berlin or a London, you think, oh, I can walk that. Or Rome, I can walk that. St. Petersburg, when you see these things, you go, man, that is too big to, you don't realize it's, you can't really walk those distances. It's so big. So make sure you do use that public transport <laughs> because it is very helpful. It goes lots of places and makes a big difference. And yes, you can bring your kids here too. It's not a big deal. Oh, that's his kid. And with that size, you really need to plan ahead with flights and transportation because of the distance and time it takes. It really is more helpful to have a better idea when you get there. So you're not trying to go place to place to place. You really need to plan it out beforehand because of those distances. Now, another thing that's going to shock you when you come here is the weather. And I'm going to tell you, the weather is no joke. Sometimes you can have great, you know, summer nights like we are here. The white nights here in St. Petersburg. And then Yeah, well, it's not going to be a California beach. Or California or Malibu or anything like that. It is really cool that daylight through the summer is fantastic. But when winter comes, it is dangerously cold and you need to be careful when you are here, all right? So when you are coming, make sure you bring clothes to layer up, bring those warm clothes. Even in the summer, make sure you got those layers because it will get chilly once the sun doesn't really go down. But once it starts to hover near the horizon, you want to be careful with that. Now the seventh thing that shocks people when they come here is safety can be an issue. Whether it is pickpockets in St. Petersburg or Moscow, or it's getting ripped off by taxi drivers, or it's people <laughs> trying to rip you off just in general. These things do happen to tourists and it does shock them how often these things happen. And it's not just in the tourism industry and stuff like that. I've got shook down by police when I've been here. These kind of things do happen and so you want to be prepared. So make sure if you're not, I mean, evenings, Finish up and head back to your hotel. Ask your hotel where you should go or shouldn't go. You do really need to pay attention with these things. And I would say with the safety kind of thing, I don't recommend, you know, don't take pictures of the police. Don't take pictures of government buildings. Well, like, you know, like military buildings and stuff like that. I mean, you can take a picture of the Kremlin, you know, those things. But you do want to be careful when you are here. And probably the most shocking of all those safety things is the traffic. When you'll see, I mean, when you go... I noticed that with almost every sign, especially the... the um the blue ones right here, the crosswalk ones, they always have this yellow, um, the yellow around it, which if they do this with more signs, that's actually quite smart. I got to say, that's actually quite good because you do sometimes miss them uh, here. On YouTube, you'll see the traffic dash cams around Russia and you'll be like, oh my God, these people drive crazy. They do drive crazy. And when you're in the crosswalk, it's like they're aiming for you. You got to be really careful with that, okay? So just heads up on that one. The eighth thing that's going to shock you when you come here is sticker shock. Russia is expensive, whether it's getting your visa costs, hotels, restaurants. For tourists, it can be quite uh, expensive proposition coming here. And you will be shocked that sometimes there's two prices, one for the locals and one for travelers. So you will have to pay more for museums or other things. So just, just yeah, be ready already, for that. We already know that. You really have what is this? The Russian visa process, if you do it in your own. Do last minute to come. You really have to think about this because so, it can take with an agency you know, like four or five days, or it could take up to a month if you're doing it on your own. And getting the invitations, the hotel stuff, oh, it's shockingly frustrating to do. So just a heads up on that, okay? And the 10th thing that's going to shock you is when you're in Moscow, yes, you really can see Lenin's body. No, you probably can't take pictures when you are there, but you can see him. So I hope you like your 10 shocks. If you that is so strange. If you want to learn more about visiting Russia? Well, anyway, 
we definitely learned a little bit about uh, Russia Day. Again, if there's any Russians out there or any person who would, who's actually bilingual, that would be perfect. Bilingual in English or in Russian or Russian and German. Definitely let me know. That would be the best. Seriously. Guys, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you want me to do more videos about Russia in general or the history or stuff like that, definitely let me know. If there's any other videos you would like me to react to, put the name of the video down in the comments and I'll go check it out. Guys, appreciate every single one of you. Take care. Bye-bye.